Hi, my name is Michael Hubbard and I'm part of the Submarine Systems Development Team in Ottawa, Canada and today I'll be talking about spectrum sharing. For this demonstration I will first address the question what is spectrum sharing? Next I will cover the four key attributes of spectrum sharing solutions and I will then run through a demonstration of Sienna's spectrum sharing solution and will wrap up by summarizing our conclusions. So, what is spectrum sharing? Spectrum sharing is one option for accessing traffic capacity in a submarine cable. Let's start by exploring these options. When the capacity of a single fiber pair exceeds the needs of a single customer, it can be advantageous to share this fiber pair among multiple customers. There are several different models for sharing this bandwidth, and we will briefly look at each one of these options. The first option is managed services. Here, the customer accesses capacity through a standardized short-reach interface, while the cable owner provides all the modems, photonics, and cable management. As a customer, this is the simplest option if you are not familiar with submarine systems, or if you simply need a small fraction of the fiber pair capacity. The second option is called managed spectrum. In this case, the customer will provide the modems, while the cable owner provides the SLTE terminal photonics. This allows the customer to choose their own modem technology, but leaves the SLTE and spectral management to the cable owner. The third option is spectrum sharing. In this case, each customer will use their own modems and their own SLTEs, and the cable owner will provide a spectrum sharing solution. This allows the customer to control both modem and SLTE technologies to meet their own capacity requirements without having to purchase an entire fiber pair. This can be thought of as providing a virtual fiber pair for each spectrum sharing customer. So, now that we understand the context of spectrum sharing, what are the technical requirements for this kind of solution? Here, we will discuss the four pillars of spectrum sharing. These are the key technical considerations which we believe are important for all spectrum sharing solutions. First, we have spectrum security. This pillar stipulates that the spectrum sharing solution must be architected such that each user is as independent as possible. In the transmit direction, this means that if one user erroneously provisions spectrum outside of their allocated bandwidth, it should not impact any other purchasers. Next, we have spectrum privacy. As the name implies, a spectrum sharing solution must be built such that each subtending SLTE only has access to their allocated spectrum. A simple broadband splitter is not sufficient here. The third pillar is called spectral monitoring. We believe it is important to not only monitor optical power levels within a spectrum sharing solution, but to also monitor the spectral content. This allows the spectrum sharing solution to work with both total power and spectral density masks to maintain independent optical performance for each spectral customer. This is really key when we're trying to make different people work with different parts of the spectrum at the same time. The final pillar is ASE power management. With total power controlled submarine cables, optical power management is critical for effectively managing both unallocated spectrum as well as mitigating various failure scenarios. Now that we have covered these key considerations for any spectrum sharing solution, let's look at the terminal configuration that we are using for this demonstration. In this example, the cable owner deploys a standard flexible grid SLTE. This is highlighted in red. This SLTE provides direct spectrum access for the cable owner along with the ASC power management function needed for spectrum sharing. In addition to the standard SLTE, the cable owner then adds a spectrum controller. This controller will provide the spectrum security and spectrum privacy functions. Each customer or spectrum owner will then provide their own modems and their own SLTE and will connect these SLTEs to the spectrum controller. In this demonstration, we have built SLTEs for two independent spectrum owners, in addition to the cable owner and operator, but the architecture can support more. Finally, we need spectral monitoring for our solution. This slide highlights all the points in the spectrum sharing solution which require spectral monitoring in both the transmit and the receive directions. 
For this demonstration, we are using our own in-skin OPM, or optical power monitor, technology for spectral monitoring. Now, let's start the demonstration by looking at the optical spectrum at each of the major interfaces in this system. First, we will start with the output from spectrum owner number one. Here, spectrum owner number one has been allocated the blue end of the spectrum. Now we're going to move to spectrum owner number two. Spectrum owner number two has been allocated the middle of the spectrum. Note that each of these SLTEs are behaving as expected and are only providing light within their allocated spectral range. Next, we look at the output of the spectrum controller. Here we can see that the outputs from each of the spectrum owners has been successfully combined, but the spectrum allocated to the cable owner is still empty as intended. This brings us to the final monitoring point in the transmit direction at the output of the SLTE. Here we can see that the whole spectrum is now properly filled for transmission through a submarine cable. Now what? Well, after propagating through a representative lab system, in this case 5,000 kilometers, we get the following receive spectrum. There is no change at the input to the spectrum controller, as expected, given the broadcast architecture of the Siena SLTE in the receive direction. After the spectrum controller, we can see the spectrum privacy function at work. While all the light was present at the input to the spectrum controller, here we can see that the bandwidth allocated to spectrum owner 2 is the only thing present at the input to their SLTE. Similarly, spectrum owner number 1 only receives their allocated spectrum. So now that we have reviewed the normal operating condition of our spectrum sharing demonstration system, let's look at some example fault cases. The first example fault case we're going to look at is the case where spectrum owner number one violates their assigned spectral range. What does this mean? Well, you can see in the picture here that instead of only building an SLT which provides light in the blue area, they are leaking over into the green area which has been assigned to spectrum owner number two. This is not okay. And this is one of the key functions of a spectrum controller is to mitigate this kind of problem. So let's look at the output of the spectrum controller. Here we can see that it is doing the job as intended. Even though spectrum owner number one had provisioned things that were wider than their assigned spectral range, the spectrum controller is filtering out the unwanted spectrum and assigning that to spectrum owner number two instead. And spectrum owner on number two is not impacted at all. If we move to the output of the SLTE, Again, we can see that both the cable owner and spectrum owner number two are operating as normal with no impact, even though spectrum owner number one has erroneously provisioned additional spectrum outside of their assigned range. Now let's move to example fault number two. In this case, we are emulating a hard failure of the SLTE from spectrum owner number two. This will effectively cause a loss of signal, or an LOS, at the spectrum controller from that input. What does that look like in our demonstration system? Well, let's look at our SDMON data. SDMON data is what comes out of our OPM and what we're using to look at the spectrum at each of these locations. The black line is the baseline, or what we observe during normal operations, whereas the blue line shows our current situation. You can see currently, there is no light anywhere out of spectrum owner number two terminal, even though we are expecting there to be some light in the green area. This is an example of that LOS case. What does it look like at the output of the spectrum controller? Similarly here, still no light from spectrum owner number two, but spectrum owner number one is operating normally as intended. At the output of the terminal, without any remedial action applied, we have the same problem. The cable owner spectrum is filled, spectrum owner number one is filled, but the middle is not. Now what happens? Why is this bad? If we look at the output of our demonstration system after propagating through a submarine cable with total power controlled amplifiers, we can see that when we don't properly load all of the spectrum, we change the propagation environment for the other portions of the spectrum. So a failure for spectrum owner number two is in fact impacting spectrum owner number one and the cable owner. This is not okay. This is bad. We need to fix this. How do we fix this? This is where we use the ASE power management feature of the terminal. 
by replacing spectrum owner number two with ASE in the cable owner's SLTE, we are able to bring the system back into its nominal operating state and spectrum owner number one and the cable owner are returned to normal operation, not impacted by the loss of signal event that happened with spectrum owner number two. This is the power of spectrum sharing. Now let's move to our third fault case. In this case, spectrum owner number two is going to exceed their spectral density mask. Now, what is a spectral density mask, you might ask? Well, instead of just looking at a simple total power measurement of, say, 10 dBm out of a terminal or 15 dBm out of a terminal, we need to look at the actual spectral content coming from that terminal. In this case, what we have contrived is that we are pretending that spectrum owner number two has replaced 30 signals of a normal power with only three signals, each running 10 dB too high. In the nonlinear propagation environment of a submarine cable, these can turn into much more dramatic interferers and cause a problem for your neighbors. So we need to detect this fault and correct it. That is why spectral monitoring is so important. The total power coming out of SLTE number two is the same in both in the normal case and in this fault case. So we need to rely on spectral monitoring to detect this. If we look at the output of the spectrum controller, the spectrum controller is not able to mitigate this fault at this point in the network. This is because it is letting that total power amount through and this is not changed regardless of the spectral content coming from SLT number two. Rather, the spectrum controller will highlight that to the spectrum sharing solution owner, in this case the cable owner, that there is a fault, that there is a problem, and it will allow the cable owner to replace the offending spectrum with benign ASE and return the operating conditions back to normal. So now that we've covered the various fault scenarios, let's go over our conclusions. First off, we covered multiple options for accessing bandwidth in a submarine cable. These varied anywhere from managed services through managed spectrum all the way to spectrum sharing. We covered the fact that spectrum sharing is a good solution if each of the various customers for the fiber pair require their own modem and SLTE technology. This is where spectrum sharing really shines. It allows everybody to use their own independent technology to access their portion of the spectrum. What do I need to do spectrum sharing? Those are the four pillars. It's very important that you have spectrum security, spectrum privacy, spectral monitoring, and ASE power management. Those are the four key things for any spectrum sharing solution. Finally, we demonstrated to you both the normal operation as well as a number of fault scenarios for our demonstration spectrum sharing solution. We hope that this sheds some light on what spectrum sharing is, what it does, and what it can do for you. And we look forward to you engaging with Sienna on this topic in the future. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.